recipe is one that my in-laws were particularly excited about. <laughs> I was up at the cabin on uh, Sunday evening, and the first thing Mary Ford asked me was, how Cindy? <laughs> and I said, well, I think she's pretty good, but we haven't actually talked. I, I call her, and usually about 10 minutes after I hang up the phone, she emails me right back. <laughs> and it was kind of a pattern over the, the years that that was how we communicated. Um, I'd like to introduce to you Cindy Bauer. I want to read the biographies again because a lot of people weren't at the, at the middle school. Cindy was raised on the Worland Ranch as the youngest of seven children for the late Raymond and Katie Bauer. She graduated from WHS in 1975 and participated in 4-H, rodeo, student council, art club, drama club, girls varsity volleyball, basketball, and track. Bauer was an eight-time All-State shortstop for the Monarch women's fast pitch softball team coached by the Wyoming Hall of Famer, Ray Sanchez. This team won a Wyoming record of six consecutive state championships from 1972 to 77. Their record was an incredible 245 and 58. The first girls basketball team at Worland High School was formed in 1973, which was Cindy's junior year, and it was coached by Worland High School inductees Don Wheeler and Jim Fassler. She was the captain and the leading scorer on the team. During her senior year at WHS, Cindy was one of the first female athletes and the first from Moreland High School to receive a women's athletic scholarship to the University of Wyoming. Bauer lettered in varsity volleyball, basketball, and softball her freshman year at UW and had a choice of athletic scholarships in each sport after her freshman year. She decided that a scholarship in basketball would be best and the university allowed her to play softball too. While a freshman in college, Bauer was the third leading hitter in the country in women's college fast pitch softball with a 467 batting average. Cindy was also named an All-American basketball player by the National Scouting Association during her senior year at UW. In 1979, Cindy became the first University of Wyoming cowgirl to sign a professional athletic contract when she was drafted and played for the Washington DC Metros of the very first women's pro league, the Women's Professional Basketball League. She held endorsements from Nike and Carnation Milk in 1980, Bauer earned a Bachelor of Science degree in psychology at the University of Wyoming and immediately went to work for the former president of her pro basketball team. She joined his resort management company, Western Services Corporation, as a management trainee, and she lived in California and in Yellowstone National Park. The following year, Cindy held ownership and senior positions in Key Resort Management of Crested Butte, Colorado, and Key Hospitality Company in Orlando, Florida. She was also the managing partner for a hotel in Orlando, and she managed other projects throughout the Southeast and Colorado. Cindy earned her CHA designation through Michigan State University in 1988. In 1989, Bauer founded her company, Caliber Management, a professional hospitality company with projects in the US, Costa Rica, Mexico, and Canada. This company still exists today. In 1991, Bauer, at age 34, was unanimously selected by her peers as the Hotelier of the Year in Orlando, Florida. She was the youngest and also the first woman to receive this award in the largest concentration of hotel rooms in the entire world, with over 89,000 hotel rooms. In the late 90s, Bauer was recruited by Delaware North Companies to operate their National Park Service contracts throughout the U.S., including the oversight of Sequoia, Grand Canyon, Yellowstone, and specifically Yosemite National Park. She was also responsible for the acquisition and operation of large resorts in California, Arizona, and British Columbia. In 1999, Bauer became the president and first female president of Yosemite National Park, the largest concessions contract in the national park system with over $110 million in annual revenue and over 3,500 employees. Cindy is the recipient of numerous industry awards, including the Department of Interior's Environmental Excellence Award and the California Governor's Environmental and Economic Leadership Award. In 2008, Bauer was inducted into the University of Wyoming Hall of Fame for the 1978-79 Cowgirl basketball team coached by the legendary Marty McDonald. Cindy served as the starting point guard for this team, for the most successful Cowgirl team ever at that time. In 2009, Cindy became the managing partner for Canyon of the Eagles Nature Park and Resort, located outside of Austin, Texas, where she resides today. Ladies and gentlemen, Cindy Bauer.
Thank you. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, Orland High School, for this incredible honor. Um, congratulations to my fellow inductees and the past inductees before us. Many thanks to Aaron. Thank you for your patience through this process, and Dave, the Board of Directors, and anyone else that played a, a role in our selection. Perhaps my fellow inductees feel the same way, but I can assure you this award is both humbling and emotional. Wyoming and the people of Wyoming made me who I am. It's an amazing feeling to come full circle tonight and be with all of you. I remember my childhood in Wyoming like it was yesterday. I guess that's a good thing. It means I haven't lost my marbles yet. <laughs> Kidding aside, there was always and will be something truly special about growing up in Wyoming. I left the state after college, but never lost my fondness for the wide open spaces and the understated ruggedness, and of course the people I still cherish to this day. It would not be untrue to say that Wyoming and her people have shaped my approach to my world and to my life. It was in Warland, Wyoming that I developed my appreciation for protecting the environment and my fearlessness to try new things. Of course, that was aided and abetted by growing up on a farm, the youngest of seven children. You had to be strong and fearless or you didn't survive. My siblings gave me the crappy household jobs and <laughs> punked me ruthlessly, but they and my amazing parents also gave me the love, support, and confidence to spread my wings in life. By the age of 11, I started imagining for real what I wanted to be when I grew up. I remember that day, about that age, when someone asked me the question. Without hesitation, I answered, I want to be a professional basketball player and a professional businesswoman. That got a lot laugh for sure. A rural farm girl being a professional basketball player? Mm -hmm. Not in a million years. Because for one thing, everybody knew girls couldn't play basketball. Mm -hmm. Well, that disbelief stirred the fearless spirit, and I learned from my upbringing. I spent countless hours and years practicing basketball alone on the rocks, the dirt, and a netless hoop. Mm -hmm. or playing pickup games with the monarchs at the armory and on the reservations. By the time I reached high school, I saw a path to my basketball dream. As Aaron stated, in 1973, we started the first girls basketball team at Warland High School. Naturally, we shared gym time with other non-essential sports, but it was a groundbreaking moment. It was a start, for those of you who remember Thank you, Title IX. <laughs> in Wyoming, the equality state, girls could finally play basketball. And here's just a, a fun fact is Liz Geis, Jerry's oldest daughter, was the center on that team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Liz <laughs> isn't here tonight, but Cheryl is. Mm -hmm. Fortunately for me, Warland High School led to Cowgirl College sports and then to professional sports. As a professional athlete, you find out really quick what you're made of and I was made of Wyoming. I wasn't the coach's pet on the Washington DC metros, but I was the fastest and the scrappiest mm -hmm. and probably the mouthiest. <laughs> it was through professional sports that I met my mentor who took me under his wings on the way to becoming a professional businesswoman. By the age of 30, I still wasn't entirely grown up, but I experienced my distant childhood dreams. My story proves that if you have a dream, believe in it, visualize it, be passionate about it. Don't be afraid to ask for help and don't give up. Don't let anyone ever tell you that your dreams are bizarre or unrealistic, even if they seem at the time, seem so at the time. Dreams belong to each of us. Dreams give us something to shoot for. No pun intended, they keep mm -hmm. us alive. Naturally, I had my fair share of obstacles, especially trying to break into the worlds where women were rare or not wanted. Every obstacle fueled and validated my dreams, but the true inspiration behind them came from family, friends, and mentors. I'm up here tonight, not because of my accomplishment, however humble, thank you, but because I owe a debt of gratitude to the many, many people who supported me 
along the way. I've done nothing alone. My journey is all about the people who helped me be successful. As we all know, there are no eyes in athletics, business, or raising a family. It's we. Life is all about who you surround yourselves with, and I wanted to just take a few moments to recognize my village. I'll start with some of my first teammates from the Monarchs. Mary Ford, Becky Dooley, um, Debbie, there's Debbie Bosch, Nancy Beachler, and others. We accomplished so much more than six consecutive state championships. Our friendship goes beyond words, and I have no doubt it will endure in our lifetimes. Thank you, and you will always be family. I'm deeply grateful to my mentors and coaches, Ray Sanchez, Margie McDonald, Eric Sewell, and Dale Jones. These people taught me the basics of partnership, sportsmanship, business, entrepreneurship, and in one case, good wine. <laughs> These leaders thrive to make making people around them better. My basketball and professional careers have their names all over. A million thanks to each of them. And to Ray Sanchez in, partic in particular, he helped mold every young girl in Warland for over 50 years and gave unselfishly to all of us. I'm not sure how he put up with all of us, but he created an amazing legacy of teens and sisterhood. And now my family. Standing here tonight brings back a flood of memories and appreciation for the Bauer Roberts plant. For a state with only 500,000 people in it, our brood makes up a large part of the census. <laughs> <laughs> How lucky I am. Um, we are, and still are, quite a bunch, and I would be nothing without you. My brothers Jim and Ray Jr. are here tonight. Jim taught me to ride horses before I could walk. <laughs> he got me interested in sports and has always been one of my biggest cheerleaders. Ray Jr. has been generous to me with his time and talent. In fact, our entire restaurant at Canning of the Eagles has his paintings. He both mean the world to me and thank you from the bottom of my heart. I also thank you for sharing your families with me. I grew up with four sisters, but sadly three of them have passed along with my oldest niece, Kip. Growing up with them was never a dull moment. It's okay, man. Okay. I know they're looking down and sassy me. To them I say, you never let me get away with anything. You made me tougher, more competitive, and you taught me to listen and not repeat your mistakes. I miss them deeply. My siblings brought some amazing in-laws into my village. There's Dina, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and Laverne. Mm -hmm. um, you're so important to me. You helped me raise me, and thank you for your continued support and love. To my 14 nieces and nephews, <laughs> some are here tonight. We have Drew, Toby, Colt, Brandon, and Nicholas is over here. And 22 great nieces and nephew. We have Faith here with us tonight and 11 great, great nieces and nephews. I treasure you and couldn't be more proud of you, each and every one of you. Someday, I hope that you're on this stage too. And above all, I wanna thank my parents, Raymond and Katie Bauer. They made, gave me many great lessons and skills, but their most wonderful gift was unconditional love and support. What a gift it makes all things possible. My parents never missed a Monarch game and they only missed two of my college games. And as Mary Ford would say, being at the games was the only time my parents took a break from farming or cooking for the masses of people that, that we had always. Mary's right, my parents' table was always crowded with food, fellowship, and love. It's no wonder I fell for the restaurant business and understood farm to table before, long before it became popular. <laughs> My father was a man of few words. His actions did the talking. Watching him made me learn how to do the job right and the importance of anticipation, organization, planning, and a strong work ethic. My mother was a saint on earth with a moral compass that never wavered from true north. She was the one who taught me the hotel business by being the perfect hostess every day of her life. 
until her passing earlier this year. And last but not least, thank you, Moreland High School, class of 75. I'm filled with gratitude for this honor and for being from, for being from the state of Wyoming. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to come home. Thank you.